Hey everyone, welcome to the Cybercram YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to discuss the ongoing Microsoft Exchange email hack. What's really interesting about this hack is it's continuing right now and it's evolving just constantly. And I've noticed as I've developed this video that there are constant uh, new findings coming out with new wrinkles to this story just constantly coming out. The first signs of this hack occurred back in January and then it looks like it became more prevalent in February and then uh, in early March Microsoft issued an out-of-band patch for Exchange but I'll discuss that further here shortly. As for my background, I'm currently the Chief Information Security Officer at a university in the US. I have a BS in Computer Science and MBA. I also hold three active certifications, the CISSP, the GCED, and GSEC GIC certifications. So a given summary of this hack, Chinese hackers named Hafnium, their hacking group's been named Hafnium, exploited four exchange vulnerabilities. There have been at least 30,000 victims in the U.S., and actually some of the reports I've seen from other media outlets say upwards of 50,000. I believe I even saw one that said 80,000. The hacks occur to be a remote code, ex remote code execution vulnerabilities with RCE vulnerabilities being very dangerous and just uh, very... Uh, just troublesome because attackers can execute code remotely and then launch their exploits. Hack servers have mostly had a web shell installed that allows remote access. And then on March 2nd, 2021, Microsoft issued an out-of-band patch to address these vulnerabilities. Basically, when you see an out-of-band patch being released, it indicates that there's a huge severity of criticality to the vulnerability and that it needs to be addressed, and this one certainly did. So further the hack, attackers, when they compromise an exchange instance, they have the ability to read all email in the system. And right now, even though the Chinese group Hafnium created the initial hack, many, many uh, cybercrime groups are taking advantage of this hack. And ESET, the antivirus firm and security firm, reported that as of March 10th, at least 10 advanced persistent threat groups were exploiting the exchange vulnerabilities. So what can you do or what should you do? So certainly a patch. Microsoft released their update for Exchange on March 2nd, like I said. So that needs to be installed as soon as possible if you haven't installed it already. Further, one thing that's been really interesting to watch is a few days after Microsoft released that first patch, they released patches for unsupported cumulative update versions. And the troublesome thing about this is that if you're running unsupported Exchange, that means that you had that many more days in between that were that your system was vulnerable and not patched. So definitely make sure you're running a vulnerable, I'm sorry, running a supported exchange instance. Something else to consider if you don't want to upgrade your on-premise exchange instance or you want to quit messing with it, migrate to Exchange Online. Exchange Online isn't vulnerable. Uh, so yeah, that means that anybody who's hosting their email in the cloud, Microsoft's cloud, isn't vulnerable. Something to be considering to consider here is that Hybrid instances are vulnerable, so if you have an Exchange Online presence, but you also have an on-premise presence, those on-premise systems definitely need to be patched. Something else to do is reference Microsoft's documentation for IOCs, that's Indicators of Compromise. I pasted a URL below in the description. Basically, Microsoft has certain things to look for that will help you identify if your system, if your network's been breached. And specifically, Microsoft provided the following to search for in your Exchange log entries to look for signs of compromise and, and exploitation. Something else to do is make sure you keep your anti-malware software updated. And I would say even further, make sure you're running, if, you're, if you've got a, an organization of any size, of any significance, make sure you're running a next-gen anti-malware. That way the anti-malware software isn't just looking for executables or binaries, but it's also looking for malicious use of legitimate executables. Enable tamper protection to prevent attackers from stopping security services. And also, like I mentioned, with that next-gen AV, you're going to be using AI and machine learning capabilities to identify malicious use of legit executables. Something else to do, and this is something you should do to basically review for signs of persistence by attackers. Review sensitive roles and security groups for changes. Often attackers will get into security groups and add themselves, add a, a compromised account, for instance, in there. That way, after you think you've cleaned up the attack, you don't realize this, that they've left basically a backdoor for themselves in your network. 
Other items to take care of, make sure you're restricting access whenever you're using service accounts. By no means use domain admin service accounts for, for high-profile systems or any systems. If you have a service account, just permission that account with the bare minimum permissions it needs to run that system. In this case, you can imagine if Exchange was hacked and Exchange was running as a domain admin, basically the attackers would then have the domain admin credentials potentially to, to move laterally on your network and compromise the entire domain. Something else Microsoft recommends is prioritizing alerts. So in one instance, they recommend that you monitor the given exchange IIS application pools for use of the W3WP executables or net.exe, command.exe, and so forth, basically to indicate if the IIS application pools are doing something behaviorally that's out of the norm. In other words, your IIS application pools shouldn't be calling these other executables to uh, perform activities. And if you do have the alert set up, then you know, you'd either generate an email alert or uh, you'd alert your SIM, which would then generate an email alert to your admins to go and take a look, basically. So what are lessons learned here? Make sure you're running supported software. Like I mentioned before, don't run an unsupported Exchange instance, and by no means, uh, don't run any unsupported software. What that means in general if you're running unsupported software is the vendor is no longer releasing security updates. Thankfully, in the case of Microsoft, with certain pieces of their software, you can get by what's called extended support. And that extended support will then get you access to certain security updates and certain patches. But this is no guarantee, so um, yeah, by all means, run supported software. And of course, if you're going to run that, if you're going to buy that extended support, you've got to pay for that, that uh, extra support from Microsoft. So all things being equal, just upgrade to a supported version. That way you don't have to pay extra for, for support from Microsoft. And like I mentioned earlier, if you're running that unsupported software, in this case, Microsoft was generous and released those security updates a few days later. But what's uh, really challenging is if your organization is running that unsupported software, you would have had that extra delta, that extra window of days in between the initial patch release and the subsequent patch release. And during each one of those days, attackers could have certainly been scanning your network and trying to exploit your exchange system. Something else to do is to make sure you're backing up your data and testing your backups. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to start with the testing your backups piece because you want to make sure you're running test restores occasionally, basically to make sure that your backups actually work. One thing you don't want to do is you don't want to think you're backing up your systems and then whenever you're in a pinch, you need to restore data and realize your backups don't work. So make sure you're restoring those, uh, running test restores to restore data and make sure to make sure your backups have integrity. Something else to keep in mind here with this, ex this exchange hack as it's been developing is attackers have been deploying a new variant of ransomware. So as you can imagine, if a system, if an exchange system is compromised and then the subsequent network has ransomware deployed, you very well may need that backup to restore from. So uh, goodness, this hack has been very just complex, but also just very uh, dangerous and uh, it's very much affected many organizations badly. So make sure you have those, those backups to restore from in the case you really, really need them. Finally, one last piece I recommend is to run file integrity monitoring software. And basically with this software, uh, it's important to tune it. But one thing you can do is to tune the monitoring to watch certain sensitive servers and highly critical servers for new directories being created and new files being created where they shouldn't be. If they are created, this file integrity monitoring software can alert you to basically say, hey, there's a new director being created on this web server or this, this uh, exchange server. You might want to go take a look. Effectively, this adds one other layer of security to your uh, defense in depth. Finally, as I mentioned, as I was developing this video, more and more developments just keep coming up. But on Friday, March 12th, that's two days ago, the Wall Street Journal reported that Microsoft is investigating whether sensitive information was leaked by either employees or partners. What's really interesting is Microsoft runs this partner program called the Microsoft Active Protections Program, or MAP. There has been one instance, I believe, in 2012 or 2013 where Microsoft had to kick out a Chinese company for supposedly divulging exploit code that then went into the hands of attackers. So in this case, Microsoft is concerned that uh, a partner or an insider is releasing code to attackers. So basically, chronology to keep in mind here is that 
Microsoft released proof of concept attack code to security and antivirus partners on February 23rd. Five days later, a second wave of attack begins. And then on March 2nd, Microsoft released the out of band exchange security updates to try to uh, stem the tide. But what's interesting is, and this certainly needs to be substantiated, I'm just you know putting this out there, but there are certainly 10 Chinese firms in the MAP program. So part of me does wonder if one of these firms is leaking data to that, that Chinese hacking group. Anyway, I'll be following this story and I highly recommend you do too. It's been almost a, a good drama to follow. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.